the book of Psalms, if you would. Book of Psalms, um, the uh, 145th Psalm. Let's all stand as we honor God's word by standing. I'm going to be preaching on something today. I'll, I'll talk about it in just a moment. Uh, but um, uh, let's, let's read these first six verses of Psalms 145. It says, I will extol thee, my God, that is, uplift thee and, and boast of thee. I will extol thee, my God, O King. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. <clears throat> I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous, wondrous works. And men shall speak of the, mighty, of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings of it. Thank you for the time we have here together. Pray, Lord, that you'll see fit to bless us today and go with us. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. I'm going to preach on something called astonishing acts. Astonishing acts. You know, over in the uh, fifth verse, uh, he says, or in the sixth verse, he says, "And men shall speak uh, uh, of the might of thy terrible acts." Well, uh, according to understand some understanding of Hebrew. Uh, that word can also be astonishing. They didn't use it there in the King James, uh, but the, the word is used terrible. It talks about the terrible acts of God over in the New Testament, and so that refers to the astonishing acts of God, and that, <laughs> that's what we want to talk about. You know, I've come to, I've come to part of my ministry, and I, I don't know if everybody does this or not, but... Uh, I've come to the part of my ministry where that uh, uh, I, I want to preach about what God is to us. You know, we, we have a tendency to forget what God is to us. We have a tendency to forget what God means to us in this. And, and so uh, my latter-day ministry is, is going to be a lot about what God is to us and, 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 and how God works in our life and what he does and how he does these wonderful and great things in our lives and and some sometimes we just we miss it we we just we we just completely miss it you know the psalmist says praise him for his mighty acts in psalms 150 and verse 2 praise him for his mighty acts whether any will admit it or not almost every person has his or her opinion uh, about speaking of the mighty acts of the Lord to another gen to another, they they have opinions about that. Some say, well, it's good to talk about God when you're out in the crowd, but some say, well, it's not so good to talk about God when you're out in the crowd. But the Bible says here, David says, I will. He says, I will speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will. Declare thy greatness. You know, um, how, how, I, I don't, don't raise any hands, but how many of you do that to your friends? How many of you talk to your friends about how wonderful God is and, and how, how, what great acts and, and, and what great things God has done for you in your life? I've said this many times. Some people say, well, I don't know what to witness about. Well, just witness about what God has done for you. That's witnessing. That, that, is, that, that is the whole of witnessing. And that's witnessing about what God has done for you. And, and so, so look at that as you, as, you, as you see these things. Generations come and generations go, yet many leave this world without ever being introduced to a wonderful God who has revealed to the world many astonishing acts of which the world recognizes not. 
lot of people, a lot of people leave this world never knowing this, these wonderful acts of God. You got, you got too many people out there that's talking against it. You turn on the TV and, and uh, you, you, never, you never hear anybody uplifting the Lord. You, you don't hear anybody uplifting the Lord. Uh, I, I, I just, and I know I probably, probably shouldn't have done it, but I was going through the channels, some of the Christian channels on there, and they had this woman on there, and I thought, well, I'm just going to see what she's going to preach about. And, and so I stopped and I listened to it. And her whole sermon, her whole sermon was about what she has done and how that she got that great crowd that she got and she had a crowd she had a, she had a lot of people there and how she got that great crowd and how and how she stays in the bible so i stay in the bible and you know what i said to te television i said you haven't gotten to the part of the bible that says a woman should keep silent and uh well she didn't answer me though but but at any rate uh uh, you know, she's talking about how, how well she studies the Bible and how, how much she knows about the Word of God. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to tell you what the Bible talks about who God is and what God is and by looking at some of the astonishing acts uh, that God performs uh, uh, every day. In all generations, Jehovah God made known his acts. God worked with every generation's ever lived upon the face of the earth, from the very first generation of Adam and Eve all the way to the last generation, whenever that's going to be, uh, upon the earth, God has shown his astonishing acts to every one of those generations. But yet, even in this day and time, people die and they leave this world never, known, never knowing who God is, never knowing of how God works and what God does. And it's all because, you know... It, I, I would hate for people to stand before God someday and say, well, those people didn't tell me about it. Or I, I would hate for some of these neighbors around here have to stand before God someday and, and, and they'll, they'll blame it all on us because they don't know who God is. They don't know about God. I, I would hate to think about that. I would hate to think that people are going to stand before God and going to give an excuse. I was reading a, what got this message on my heart. I, I was reading a, 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 a something some, I picked up somewhere. I was going through some of my stuff, and I found it. And, and it said uh, the title of the little poem was, uh, Brother, You Didn't Tell Me. And, and the whole poem was about I, I'm, I'm standing here before God, and God is, God is requiring of me things, brother, you didn't tell me about. He said, why? He said, and in Psalm, he says, why didn't you tell me about these things? Why did you let me come to this point in, in, in my existence, and you didn't tell me about these things? And, and so, you know, there's going to be, I tell you, I, I believe there's people going to use excuses when they stand before God that they were not talked to or no one told them. And, and so I tell you, folks, it's something to think about. Um, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel, Psalms 103.7. He, he made known his acts under his ways unto Moses and his acts unto his children of Israel, Psalms 103, verse 7. Like this generation, they did not know of the mighty acts of Jehovah God, but he made known unto them. You know, uh, there, 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 there were, if God hadn't made known himself to them, they would have never known anything about God. And, 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 and they, they wound up forsaking God. Even though they did know him, they wound up forsaking God. The Bible says that they, they, they desecrated uh, the Sabbath. And because they desecrated the Sabbath, they were put into captivity. You know, are, are, we, are, are some of this generation into captivity today? To where they, they can't speak? Uh, you know, when, when God put Israel into captivity, they couldn't speak no longer of Jehovah. 
They couldn't testify no longer, Jehovah, because God had, God had shut their mouth about who he was and what he was. They couldn't testify those things. Is that what's wrong with us today, that we can't go out and testify to people how good God is? That's just like a young man yesterday said something to me about this young man. I'm, I told you about him before, and I don't know, ever since he learned what I believe about the holidays, man, he's been on me. He got on me again yesterday, and I told him, I said, listen, and I called him by his first name. I said, listen, I said, I serve one of the most wonderful gods ever was. And I said, uh, he said, well, I do too. I said, but your God has not showed you the wonderful acts of staying away from paganism. Staying away from those things. He said, oh, no. He said, I, he said, that's not in the Bible. I said, it is in the Bible. I said, it's very clearly in the Bible. But see, the thing about it is, you've got a young man there. He's probably in his late 30s, mid-30s, mid to late 30s. And, and, he, and he, 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 he thinks that he knows everything that he needs to know about religion. He goes to a Baptist church goes to a Baptist church right here in Tombs County. But he thinks that he knows everything he needs to know about religion, but yet he doesn't understand just how great God is and how God can take him away from those things by some mysterious way of working with him. God can take you away from those things, just like God can put you into the things he wants you in, but sometimes he does it in a mysterious way. He doesn't always come right out and do it that way. That's what makes him so wonderful and, 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 and so, so mysterious. Uh, to all generations, God says, who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Who can do that? Who can do that? I'm going to be preaching a message this afternoon called, Who Must Endure? And you're going to be surprised when we... When you get down into that message just this afternoon, that those of you that stay for the afternoon service or come back for the afternoon service, who can, who can endure? Well, let me tell you, folks. He says here, who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? You know what he's talking about there? God has so many mighty acts that no one can tell all of them. No one can utter every one of them. No one, you, you, can, you can try the rest of your life telling people about the things that God does and you will wind up spending the rest of your life and you'll never cover everything that God does. you never cover everything that God does for you. you never cover every, anything God does for me or, or, or anyone else. You'll never be able to cover them if you start right now trying to, uh, trying to, trying to uh, utter the mighty acts of the Lord. God cries out to the, this current generation as he did to other generations. Now, therefore, stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all righteous acts, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, before the Lord of all righteous acts of the Lord, which he did in you and your fathers, 1 Samuel 12, 7. You know, I was told one time, don't talk about the fathers that's gone before us, because that's not important. But what wonderful acts has God done? I've heard people say, well, my grandfather and my grandmother were, they were just, boy, they were good Christian people. They talk like act, I, they would like to be like them. But for some reason, they can't be like them. I don't know why that is. You can, you can be like them. You can, you can be like your grandfathers and grandmothers when they, when they, uh, they worship the Lord. And, and, and let me tell you, folks, they, they went to the God's house to worship the Lord. I've got some old book. I've, I've got some books that's got some old pictures in it. Of, of, uh, and, and I've got probably a hundred of them. And, and, and they've got old pictures in them of how people worshiped in the days that came before us. And let me tell you, folks, those folks, those folks, those folks look like Christians. They acted like Christians. 
and, and, and such and such as this, and those people were people that worshiped the Lord. I'll, just, I'll never forget 50-some years ago, I preached a revival at, in, 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 in Barnes, on Barnes Mountain. It's a place up there in Kentucky called Barnes Mountain. And I've told you this before. You had to park your car two, two miles from the church building. Then you had to walk the rest of the way. And the first time old men, me and old brother, uh, uh, well, I can't remember his name now. But anyway, when we went up there, you know, I thought to myself, well, they won't be nobody here. And I'm going to tell you, by 7 o'clock that afternoon, that Monday afternoon, by 7 o'clock, that little old, that building up there was packed. People came up out of them woods. They came up out of those woods, and they came to God's house, and they worshiped the Lord, and they praised God every night. They had to park two miles away from it. And, and, and they walked up that mountain and came up there to worship. You know, we can't even get out of bed on Sunday mornings. Much less, we can't get out of bed and get to our car and come to church and park right out here, park right outside the door. You know, it, it, it's amazing, you know, how people park, try to park to where they don't have to walk very far. <laughs> and I'm one of them. But th that's what's amazing about this generation. You know, are, are, are we just lazy? What's wrong with us? God, God has a lot of astonishing acts out there if we just, if we just look for them and see them. He said, stand still. He told him in 2 Samuel 12, 7, he said, stand still that I may reason with you. What, why won't we be quiet long enough? Won't we be still long enough? Hey, these people come to church here and they just keep talking to one another. Half the preacher's preaching, look, I look back there and they're talking to one another. Or they're doing something else. The young people, you know, they have a hard time. Not talking to one another, like they don't get enough talking in before church. It's, it's sad, this generation in which we live, it really is. It's sad. How long will you waggle between two intentions? How, how long will people do that? It is a fact that all of us have been, I'm sorry, have seen the great acts God performs before his people. Jehovah God told Israel, but your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord, which he did. All, all of you have seen great acts. You know, we've had young people that have, that Lord has saved them. That's a great act of God. That's a, you've seen these great acts. You've seen these great things. And, and, and the Bible says there will be rejoicing in heaven over one soul. One soul had come to the Lord. But yet, you know, we don't rejoice over that. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't rejoice over that. And, and uh, this same young man I was telling you about, he said, how many people do y'all have coming over there? And I told him. And he said, I don't ever hear from none of them. I said, how many of them do you know? He said, I know several of them. But he said, I'll never hear anything from them. He said, you're the only one that I hear anything from. And, and of course, he start, he, he's the one started with me. But the fact is, folks, you know, people are like that. You know, I was, somebody was talking the other day about a, a, a Baptist church around here that is it, really growing. You know who they gave the... You know who, who, who they gave the glory to? The preacher. The preacher. They said, since we got brother so-and-so, said the church has really started growing. But let me tell you, everybody wants to see the person, but they don't want to see God. They don't want to understand what God, what God is doing among his people today. I'm telling you today, you have seen the great acts of God which has been done right here at Landmark Baptist Church. 
God saved you, didn't he? Was that not a great astonishing act, or was it? Look at Psalms 136, if you would, for just a moment. Back in, back in Psalms 136, I want to read something to you here. Psalms 136, uh, verse 1. And I'm not going to read this whole psalm, but I'm going to read a, a little bit of it, and then I trust that you may read the rest, rest of it. He says, Oh, give thanks, Psalms 136. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that, read, that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule the day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule the night, for his mercy endureth forever. Just read all the way through there. You, you, you talk about there's, there's probably uh, uh, about 25, maybe 30 acts that's mentioned right there. And along with every one of them, his mercy endureth forever. God doesn't stop. God didn't stop when he created the earth and sat back and, and got him a big meal and picked his teeth and turned the television on and sat back and quit. God didn't do that. God just kept. That's what that, that's what that his mercy endureth forever. That's what that means. That God, God has done these great things ever since Ever since he created the world, he's done these great things in the world. His mercy always endures. He's always there. Now, the message that I'm going to be preaching this afternoon, who must endure? And, and it's, it's connected. It's not, I, won't, I won't be using this, this one Psalm 136, but it's connected to this right here. Who must endure? Who must endure? You know, but God... I'm sorry, did God not deliver one of our young men from the clutches of death last week? Did not he do that? That's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. Griffin, you don't know how close you came, brother. I want to tell you, you know, you, you, you other young people starting to drive, and I'm going I'm to keep pounding this because I tell you, somebody hadn't pounded into, into young, our young people's lives how important it is to serve the Lord and, 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 and be where God is. Because if this, as they get older, they take off and they're gone. Somebody hasn't pounded into them. And we, we need to see that. I'm, I'm telling you, we need to see that. I, I saw on TV today where or not today, but one day last week where somebody ran off of the road to Griffin and there was two of them in there and both of them were killed. And their vehicle wasn't tore up half as much as yours was. Let me tell you folks, we, we need to realize this. What, what great, wonderful acts, acts that God does. Now I'm, I'm going I'm to tell you this, Griffin, God was also speaking to you. Maybe you don't know it, but he was. God was also speaking to you. What are you, 20 years old now? Yeah, you look it. No, I'm sorry. I'm just cutting up. But anyway, anyway, uh, God was speaking to you. And, and, and all of you, all of you, God was not only speaking to Griffin, but God was speaking to you other young people. We got three, we're going to have three new drivers for long. You know, and, uh, and those cars are dangerous. They are. You better go out. You better go out with God on your mind when you go out nowadays. You better go out with God on your mind. You know, uh, Ron and I went to Kentucky sometime back when Emily was born. And for, before we ever left the house, we had prayer about that trip. Well, number one, Rhonda wanted to have prayer because 
she was riding with an old man that she thinks can't see. But, uh, but uh, we had prayer. You better pray. I don't, don't raise your hands. How many of you prayed before you left your house today in your car? How many of you prayed, God, take care of me till I get to church? How many of you are going to pray when you leave here today, God, take care of me as I leave here? Give me a safe journey home. Oh, we pray it in general all the time. We pray it. Neil prays. He prays about, Lord, watch over people when they travel. Brother Sam prays, God, watch over people when they travel, when they go places. Whenever some of you have gone places, you've had people back here praying that God will send you back safely. But what about yourself? Did you pray that God would send you back safely? Oh, I tell you, you better realize, you know, God has ways of speaking to us. If we're to understand, well, let's look at Psalm 107 first before. How, how long does it take us to forget as time passes about the things God has done for us? Turn with me, Psalm 107, if you would. In Psalms 107, and I'm going to read in verse 8, begin in verse 8, he says, Oh, that men, and, and this is a plead. This is a plead. This, this is not, a, this is not uh, anything saying we should. He says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron because they rebelled against the words of God and condemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there, and, and there was none to help. Who's he talking about there? He's talking about his own people, Israel. That's who he's referring to there. They were put into chains. They were sent into, they were sent into captivity. The, 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 the Egyptians used them as slaves and, and, and such and such as this. He said, oh, if my people would just turn back and see who I am and praise my name if they would just do it. But he says there, he says, because they rebelled against the words of God and, and condemned the counsel of the Most High, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. Oh, you know, we, we can talk about what Satan can do all day long. Satan can't do that. Satan can't bind you up unless you, you, you let him bind you up. God can bind you up to where for 70 years, 70 years, Israel was not allowed to worship God. Seventy years. We got people here today that think that it's, a, it's, just a, it's just something I should do on Sunday. Seventy years, these people were not allowed to worship the Lord until, uh, until they restored the worship. Ezra restored the worship in Jerusalem. And they came by the millions because they had not worshipped the Lord for 70 years. They weren't allowed to. Every one of you free today. You're free. You can worship the Lord, but yet there's some that can't get out of bed and come to church. There's some that's got other things they got to do today instead of coming and worshiping the Lord. I always say this, and I don't apologize for it. If you, if you do something else on the Lord's day, you, you love that more than you do the Lord. You really do. And you're not in the Lord's house serving him. If we're to understand the astonishing acts of God, then we must see in astonishment and in all the mighty acts of God. It was David who said, Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. Psalms 113, verses 5 and 6. 
If we only look to ourselves and our weak prayers and, and, and judge God by our own standards, we, must, we, are, we are most miserable as men and women. We must approach God as, as, as he is and reject the, ourselves as we are. We must see God in the, in the little things as well as in the great things. Most of us are only happy when we see God in the great things. Oh, it was a wonderful thing. Oh, I went and had tests run. The doctor said, I'm fine. I'm just as happy as I can be. What would you have been if the doctor told you he was going to die in six weeks? What would have been your, what would have been, what would, what would you have done? If God told you, come back and told you you're going to die in six weeks, how would you have handled that? How would you have handled that? Well, they'd been some would feel their bellies full of pills. So they don't have to think about that. They be those who, who hit the bottle. You know, that's not that's not what God does. God, God says you praise me in the good things and you praise me in the bad things. Some people have a hard time doing that. God is the maker of and the keeper of all things, both small and great. He, 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 he is the maker and the keeper of it. Let's see, this clock up here says it's 10 to 1. If, 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 we are, if we are to understand the astonishing acts of God, then we must see in astonishing and in, in, in all the mysterious acts of God. God has mysterious acts. He sure does. There came a time in history when God manifested himself in the flesh. The Apostle Paul says, and without controversy, great is a mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the, uh, unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. That's a wonderful act of God when God can... When God can come back as the incarnate Son of God. Jesus was God incarnate. Jesus was God that you could see. The Bible says no man has seen God at any time, but Jesus has revealed him to us. See, it's all, that's the reason the Bible says, in the name of Jesus. Everything is done in the name of Jesus. Everything we do is done in the name of Jesus. When, when was this? When, when Jesus came down from the heights of heaven's deity to the dark depths and de degradation of humanity. Jesus came in and walked among this filth here on the earth. Oh, I tell you. He walked among the filth here on earth. He did it for you and he did it for me if you're saved today. He chose himself God chose himself to come down and walk among the filth of this earth. And he walked for three and one half years, three and a third years, among the filth of this earth. But yet, we reject him everywhere we turn. We, when we're doing something we love to do, we reject him. When we're doing something that we think is just wonderful, we reject him. When we think of this, we reject him. But we don't go to the Lord's house where he's uplifted. Listen, I'm going to uplift God. I, I don't, I don't, it don't matter to me. I'm going to be leaving here before long. I'm going to uplift God before you. I'm going to uplift God. I'm going to show you who God is and what God is. What God is. 1 John 1. Turn with me over there. 1 John 1. I'm about finished. 1 John 1 and verses 1 and 2. He says, That which was from the beginning, which, was, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, with our, with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, 
and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. John says, John says, I've seen it. I know it to be true. I've seen it. John, John was boiled in a cauldron of oil. But this was before he was boiled in a cauldron of oil. Who, who did John see when he was down under that bubbling grease? Who did, John, who, who, who did John see? He saw Jesus. Who did he see when they carried that scalded body out and put it on the Isle of Patmos and left him there to die naturally? Who did John see? He saw Jesus, and Jesus told him all about the revelation. All about it. All about it. God revealed to him. Now listen. You're sitting here today, you're in your right mind, you're, you got your right eyes, and let me tell you folks, it's no fun to have bad eyes. I realize that now. It's no fun to have bad eyes, but you got good eyes. You can sit here, you can study the Word of God, you can listen, you got good ears, you can hear. You can hear these things. And you can know, John says, John says, I've, I've seen it. John saw the best of Jesus when he was in that cauldron boiling in oil, cooking him. He saw the best of Jesus there. Hmm. I know. <clears throat> When, when were you, where were you when this happened to you that you saw Jesus? I know where that great city of A Athens was. They were drunk on the wine of skepticism. You know, this generation is drunk on the wine of skepticism. They, they, they're skeptic about everything everybody says, even Brother Paul. They're skeptic about it. Because they know Brother Paul's a man, and, and they know that Brother Paul is not very smart, and, and they know that Brother Paul doesn't have much sense for anything. But yet they're skeptic. They're skeptic about anything anybody tells them. It doesn't, make, it doesn't do any good, you know. I, somebody said, why don't, you, why, don't you, why don't you talk to me or something like that? Well, you know, I am talking to you right now. Talking to you right now. Just as the world is today, asleep, as, as Brother Winston mentioned this morning in, the, in his uh, devotion. Just as the world is today, asleep and folded in the robes of self-righteousness. You know, people robed in their own righteousness. I know what I believe. I know what I stand for. And I'm happy with that. The same person that told Brother Kendall that time that he was happy with what he believed, told me the same thing when I talked to him. He says, I'm happy with what I believe. Had a man just, just about a few days ago tell me, he says, I'm happy with what I believe. And he was so robed in self-righteousness that, that, you, that, that you, you, no way you could tear that robe off of him. He was so robed in it. And a lot, a lot of people are today you know, are you robed in self-righteousness? They, 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 they're asleep, folded in the, in the robes of self-righteousness and headed for a devil's hell. Is there a good reason for you to utter the mighty acts of God and show forth all of his praise to the lost and dying world? Is there a need for that? Sure there's a need for that. All right, let's all stand if you would. We're going to sing a verse of song, and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to get